Stadt, 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 Stadt. I'm starting a new series of paintings and I find it very helpful to have a basic colour palette when I start that I can work from. In this video I'm going to show you exactly how I put together a colour palette. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. When I start a new series I like to start with a colour palette in mind just to make it easier um, for myself and I don't have to make as many decisions while I'm painting. So it's good to have a starting point with a few pre-mixed colours. Over time the colour palette will probably change quite a bit because I will be adding more and more layers and probably feel like there's a colour missing and just slowly add different colours in. But to start with I want a few colours that I'm happy with. When you're developing a colour palette it's um, very useful to look at your mood board first. So you can see I've got quite a cohesive colour palette already. So I've got these darker rusty tones and uh, muted pinks, a little bit of blue and a lot of light, like beigey whites and some bra more brown tones. Maybe even this little um, sagey green. I very much like that as an accent. The way I do my colour palettes is I choose one type of each primary colour. So, for, uh, so a type of red you can see um, I've got a, quite a warm red or maybe a cool red like this magenta or you can even use a more muted version like this burnt sienna um, instead of a red and some sort of blue this is ultramarine that is a cerulean blue or even more of a turquoisey colour for the yellow you could have a warm yellow. This is um, cadmium yellow deep which I like to work with a lot. This is a lemon yellow so quite a cool acidy yellow. Or again you could use something more muted like this um, yellow oxide. And then in addition to these three primary colours I like to use a darker muted colour. So you could um, use black or you could switch it up and choose some sort of brown, like this raw umber. And I always um, use white for mixing as well. If you haven't done any colour mixing before, you could just choose a random set of colours, like a burnt sienna, maybe a tarlow turquoise for your blue and a cadmium yellow deep, and then just mix them all maybe even black and of course white, uh, mix them all together in different combinations and see if you like what comes out. And you can do that with different variations of colour. But I have this book, this book, uh, it's just a normal sketchbook which I use for mixing colour. So you can see I've already done quite a lot of um, experiments, like this was yellow oxide, cadmium red deep and black and white, so this didn't have a blue. This, um, this was burnt sienna, ultramarine and white. Um, I have used this combination in the past quite a lot, I really like these kind of muted colours. Yeah, it's just full of swatches. I um, looked at all my swatches that I've made in the past and compared them with my with the colours on my mood board. These colours for example were working quite well so this could be an option. This is um, burnt umber, ultramarine, lemon yellow and magenta and white. These as well so that could work especially these here, these are more muted versions could work really well I also did this one, which is a, a yellow oxide, uh, magenta, ultramarine, um, is this raw umber, burnt umber? Oh yeah, it's a raw umber and uh, white. So I thought 
especially these muted tones down here, work really well. If you look at them just like that, work really well with this palette. They're quite a bit warmer than the ones with the lemon yellow. Uh, but I thought, what if I did it even warmer? So I used a cadmium yellow deep and a cadmium red light, which is a warm yellow and a warm red. But then I thought these are actually too warm, too reddish orange. Whereas this is, has got quite a cool look to it. So I decided to go with this option. The yellow oxide and magenta, ultramarine, raw umber as my um, dark muted colour and then of course white. So I've done some initial mi mixing but I'm going to show you how I do my mixing and then mix some more different shades that we can choose from. Now I'm just going to start by mixing two colours together at a time. These are all System 3 acrylics by the way. So I've got, apart from the yellow oxide, that's a golden one. So yellow oxide, magenta, ultramarine blue, raw umber and white. And I always like to have a little swatch at the top of each colour to remind me what I used. So I'm going to mix the yellow oxide with the magenta. And I make a few different um, strengths of each one. So this one's quite even. Um, then one with more yellow. And one with more magenta. And I always like to make notes as I go. Yellow oxide. These are yellow oxide and magenta. Um, I'll mix the magenta with the ultramarine. So that's magenta and ultramarine. Now I'm going to mix the ultramarine with the yellow oxide. So because um, I've only mixed uh, two primary colours at a time, these are very saturated. What I then like to do is add some white into these mixtures. So that's these colours plus white. I'll do the same with the purpley colours. And the green. What I then like to do next is each primary with um, the dark colour, so in this case raw umber. If you're wondering what I'm doing up here, I have have this board that I just wipe all my brushes on, um, all the excess paint, and it comes out with quite interesting ideas that might spark something for a series or a different painting. Okay, so I'll do the yellow again, this time with some raw umber. Let me do a swatch here. And I'll do the same I did here. So first I use more of one colour and then gradually add a bit more of the other colour. And then again I add white to this.
here mixed with the brown are much more what I'm looking for because they're obviously a lot more muted mixed with the brown than just two primaries mixed together. What I'd like to do next is mix two primaries plus the raw amber. Now I'm going to start again with the yellow and magenta and um, raw amber and just do a few different mixes of that combination. And then I want to add white to all of these. So that already gives me a good idea of um, the kind of colours I can make with this combination. And then I want to mix all of the three primaries together, which I haven't done yet. I'll do that down here. So I'll use some yellow oxide, magenta and ultramarine. So the more colours you mix together, obviously the more um, different variations you can get. See this looks very similar to the one that I mixed with raw amber, just because the magenta is also neutralising the green. You see sometimes I even just mix on the page when I feel like it's too similar. I want a little bit more of this colour. Like here the magenta, I'll just add the magenta straight in on the page. So that gives me a nice range of colours. And then, you probably guessed it, I'm going to add white to these colours. So the more colours you mix together, obviously, the more and more neutral they get, which is why towards the end I'm starting to really like the colours that come out. Whereas before, when they're more the two primaries mixed together, they're too saturated for me. But it's good to have a range, also a few more saturated one, because if you put a saturated colour next to a muted colour, it makes the muted colour more muted and the saturated colour more saturated. This is a bad example because this is already not a very saturated colour. But if you put this next to this, that sings a lot more. And you can just keep going like this forever, really. <laughs> until you have made all possible colour combinations, which um, you probably never will. Um, I think I'm going to stop here. I could also mix um, the three primaries and the raw sienna together and then mix. So I could also mix the three primaries and the raw sienna, not raw sienna, raw umber together and then mix all these with the white and then I'd get through another few pages but I think this is quite good to stop here. So now I'm going to compare these with what's on my mood board. So this is the mood board and these are the colours I've mixed. 
so you can see that the first pages check this is still a bit wet are much more saturated so this first page I probably won't really use any of these colors apart from maybe the ones with the white and then the ones that mix with the brown are getting much closer and then when I've mixed even more colors that's really where these colors come up so I'm going to go through and see which ones I think could work for my series. So I have a lot of pinky colours on here. So let's see what could work with that. I really like those down here. Also this isn't really in here, but I think that could be quite good. So I'll make a little mark on here. This is a bit more saturated, which is probably good. So I can then again intermix those colours. These two are really nice for that. I mean this is just more white added to this colour, which I can always easily do. I also like this greeny blue, but it could almost be more saturated. Go for this one. Could make it more blue like this. So somewhere in between these two. And I also want a like a beigey colour. This may be this is very good, but it could be lighter. Also, that is very nice. And this, this is more grey. Let's use them both. And then I have this kind of rust colour. So this could be quite good. Is there anything here? Maybe these brown, possibly this one, or well these are very similar, one of these. Once I mix them they will look slightly different anyway. I also really like this aubergine colour. I used like a dark navy blue in pretty much all my series. Maybe I should try and avoid that this time. But I do really like this grey blue. Or even this, which is almost like a black, but richer. Maybe I'll go for something like this instead. So I have some pinky colours. Darker reddish ones. Sagey greens. These are very similar to this, actually. I guess this is quite like that rust colour. Do I want anything more saturated? Probably not really. This is very pretty as well. Again, quite similar to what I use usually. But maybe. Okay. So now I've selected or pre selected some colours that I like that I think go with this. I want to make some colours, larger colour swatches. So I've pre cut just some heavier cardstock. I think that's just cartridge paper um, and I'm going to uh, paint one of these for each of those colors and then it'll be easier to compare them and maybe see what colors are still missing. So where's my first selection? None of these. This one. So yellow oxide and raw amber and some white. So I'm going to write that on the back of the card so I'll remember and don't have to write it on there when, it's, when the front is wet, when I've painted on it. And I'm not putting quantities on there. Over time you get to know how much colour is in which combination. It doesn't always have to be super exact. I've got the yellow oxide, raw amber and white, quite a lot of white probably. A bit more brown. That looks quite similar, maybe a bit more brown even. If I add more of the raw amber, it gets a cooler colour than if I have more of the yellow oxide. That looks pretty much there. Actually, now that I look at it, it looks quite yellow. So, more raw amber. Maybe even more white. Mm. 
yeah that's more like it does that look kind of like that close enough That's all the colours I had selected. Very muted. I might need to add some colours. Let's check them against my uh, mood ball. These are the colours that do work very nicely with my mood board. But I'm not sure I've got a good range of colours. So definitely want something like this where I think this is just a lighter version of this so i probably go with this one and then I want a rusty colour should be more like this or more like this the thing is I probably prefer this one but this one because it's a bit more saturated I can always dull it down while I'm painting so I might go with this instead and then for the blue I've only really got this blue which is very grey I don't know if I want to add another blue. That's quite good. And then for the... Actually, this red looks really red on camera. It's not that red. It's more of a rusty red. I'm not sure this aubergine goes with it, even though I really like it. Then a light beigey colour. That one works quite well. The pinks. Very much like this colour. Which again, I could lighten to something like this. So I do really like, I really like these two, but they're basically lighter versions of this. So I think I'm gonna go this, and then this is basically just a light version. And this one. And then I need a dark colour. So it's nice to have a good range, so I have a few mid-tones, some light ones. And for the dark colour, so very similar, just one's more green and one's more blue. I did say I wanted to to go away from the blue a little bit more. I feel like this is too green. What's the difference here? Hard marine raw umber. Yep, let's just got a bit of yellow oxide in it. I do feel like this red is distracting. Maybe I will swap it for this. But then this is very similar to that one. That does feel better. I think I might go with the more blue version actually. Or I could just make this more blue. Yeah, let's go with the blue. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and these are just lighter versions of these. A darker blue, this more greeny colour, which also goes with this. Greyish blue. Uh, very light beige, which I might make even lighter. And then the rust colour and a light version of that rust colour. Oh no, sorry. This is the pink. And then light pink. That feels very nice together. So now I'm going to pre-mix these colours. Just try and match them again. They don't have to be 100% exact. And Maybe not the light ones, because I can always add white, and I can also always mix in these colours that I used to mix. That I used to mix from. Perfect. I like to mix my paint in these takeaway containers, because they come free and you reuse them. And um, they're quite wide, so if I was painting a large painting, or with a large brush, I can get the large brush in here really easily, rather than having a little pot like this, where I can only fit a brush that's this wide. So I'm going to start with this pink. 
yellow oxide magenta ultramarine and white and I also like to add a little bit of this um, acrylic flow medium which is Jackson's own brand just to um, change the consistency to a little bit more fluid Right, now I just need to do the same for the other five colours. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know if you also start with a colour palette. If you're interested to see how I made the mood board that I shared in this video, I did a whole video on that. Um, you can find that here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you want to hear more tips from me or follow my journey along. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye bye. bye.